First, let's talk about the happy end of the story. Chickens being gifted, a gesture of gratitude and respect in this setting in Uganda's countryside. A day of celebration after years of bitter arguments between poor farmers, a foresting company and the Ugandan government. A story of tears and land taken away from farming families. And a story of rebuilding trust and restoring dignity. Of impartial mediators who guided the community to work with those they had blamed for their troubles. The celebration was unlikely to happen actually because this story started with soldiers and police. One early morning in Uganda's Namvasa and Mubende forest areas, two hours west of the capital Kampala, villagers woke up to the sights and sounds of violence. Ugandan soldiers and police had come to evict them from the land where they had lived for decades. Uganda's government claimed the farmers were illegal settlers. It had licensed their land to an enterprise called the New Forest Company. New Forest was going to plant trees on the land and the government saw no reason to compensate the farming community. Everybody had a different version of who was at fault for the eviction of the community. They were illegally occupying the government land. We are licensed by the government. The government uh, provides us a license. It provides the land on which we actually manage our operations. I want to go to the the farming community drummed up international support for their case. They enlisted the help of Oxfam, a non-government organization that deals with global poverty and injustice. Oxfam started to investigate. As it turned out, one of the investors in the New Forest project was the World Bank Group. Through its private sector arm, IFC, the bank had invested in a green fund, which in turn had invested in the New Forest project, an investment that sought to have a positive environmental impact. In December 2011, a complaint arrived in Washington at the CIO, the Independent Complaints Office for Investor IFC. Signed with their fingerprints, the villagers asked the CIO to step in and help the farmers restore their livelihoods. So when we got involved initially, there was a lot of pain, there was a lot of anger. Um, people had, had, you know, had pretty much lost everything. Their livelihoods, their homes, their community uh, was lost. And understandably, they, they pointed at the, at the forestry company um, as, the, you know, as the, the, the instigator of this. It was a messy situation and complicated. And most importantly, houses and livelihoods had to be rebuilt. The dispute resolution process stayed clear of blame. There was no judgment on who was at fault or verification of who spoke truth. What mattered was an opportunity to resolve the problems by reaching consensus on a solution that could be the building block for lasting cooperation between company and community. It was very difficult at the outset because um, they hadn't ever sat in a room and discussed issues uh, about their, their futures together um, as equals. There was a lot, of, um, a lot of bad history between them. So the first phases of the mediation was merely, was really just to, to first get, get the parties to a point where they could talk to each other. But how to build trust and negotiate when emotions run high, when the playing field is not level? The company was unfamiliar with the mediation process and the community felt vulnerable because they had no experience in negotiation. So both sides received training. The community selected representatives for the negotiations who reported back to the community. Both parties now were prepared to negotiate. There was an agreement that for four years uh, following the agreement, the community and the company would work together on various development initiatives uh, that would support the community um, um, and would be a way for the company to build its, its relationship into the future. So the CAO process really 
as I said, was important for me. It was a learning curve for me and my team because that particular process was happening at a much larger scale than uh, we, we, we normally engage in on day to day. And, and, and it obviously uh, had certain, to meet certain international benchmarks as well. And it built on an important realization that both sides had a shared interest in finding a resolution. For us, obviously, investment in community development is inherent to our risk mitigation strategies. As um, a tree planting uh, entity, uh, some of our biggest risks, our single biggest risk is fire. Uh, you have uh, encroachment, you have uh, cattle grazing. Uh, if cattle were to graze in these young trees here, the damage would be extensive. And all these are things where community action, community behavior, community attitudes, perceptions have a very big impact. So we started saying, guys, you are our neighbors, we are here, we want to make sure that the forest works for all of us. And this is what life for the community looks like after both sides signed an agreement. The farmers from now on would respect the new forest company's legal right to plant trees and the company volunteered to expand its social responsibility program. New forests had water holes drilled for better access on the new land. It built a small clinic that could help with simple medical problems. A long list of important investments that signaled plenty of goodwill. Investment decisions were made in a joint development forum, putting the community into the driving seat. The community received machines to mill maize, reducing farmers' production costs and children now would go to school in buildings constructed by the new forest company as well. Women were coached to build their own businesses in order to create a lasting source of income. And help them develop business ideas that would do sustainability after we had left for the cooperative. <laughs> Everything had been turned around by the agreement, no more cups half empty or dry, creating excitement for the community. With the groundbreaking agreement in place, the Ugandan president even stepped in and made funds available for the additional purchase of land for the community. Some land still needs to be distributed because clearing land titles is difficult in Uganda. In fact, it is so difficult that you see not for sale signs instead of for sale signs on real estate because the owners are afraid of a fraud scheme in which people sell houses or land in the absence of the real owner offering fake titles to the property. Trust is key for any business transaction, so rebuilding trust through mediation becomes a win-win for markets and investors. This mutual understanding, I think, and this trust that's been built as part of the process is something that's going to last way beyond the issue at hand, but it's going to guide them as sort of neighbors that have to coexist for the next 30 years. So I think that's where we really see um, the value of the dispute resolution function that CAO offers. So on this day of celebration for the communities, almost everybody came. The community, the company, the government and the mediators. Everybody shook hands and a new cooperative building paid for by the new forest company was opened on the occasion. An accomplishment of six years of coming together. Today is a day of joy. The mediation worked because both sides built a relationship that guaranteed a mutual benefit. That is the space that is provided through mediation. Um, a neutral party coming in to hold a conversation um, amongst people who have different views and trying to find common ground. 
and trying to find ways where those parties can mutually benefit. And I think what was being recognised today was that although there might have been willingness between the company and the community to engage. There wasn't an obvious space and platform and what the, the, the company referred to as the mediation space. And I think that was the opportunity that was presented to the CAO when the community in Oxfam brought us the complaint, was to respond and provide that platform. When the mediation started, there was almost no structure to be found on this land. Today, it is part of the Mubende Bukakikama Cooperative Society a community that hopes to build a lasting partnership with its new neighbor, the New Forest Company.